In this video, we'll be entering all our HTML boilerplate code. I'll widen the interface, and we'll start typing in the index.html file. Enter a less than sign and exclamation mark the word doc type space HTML greater than sign. So this should be the first line of any website you're working on. Whether or not the word doc type is entirely in caps is up to you, but I've typically seen it this way. So this line tells the browser to expect an HTML document. Now we'll add our HTML tags and open those up. And inside those, we'll put head tags, and then we'll add body tags. I'll open up the body tags, and then I'll open up the head tags. Now we want to enter in our character set meta tag. So I'll type meta space char set for character set equals, and inside I'll put utf-8. The character set determines what characters are going to be used on your web page. And utf-8 contains all the characters that we're going to need. Then we'll enter title tags, and we'll set the title of this page to Amazing Zenva Page About Alaska. Now I'll put a return after the first meta tag, and we'll enter our second meta tag, which will be for the viewport. So type in meta, and we'll name the display viewport. Then we'll set the content equal to, and add a pair of quotation marks. The width equals the device width. So when it first loads up, that's the width it's going to be, whatever the device width is. We'll add a comma, and then we'll set the initial scale to 1, which is 100%. Now what we're going to do is link to the shortcut item, so a little picture appears in the tab. So I'll type in the word link, and the relationship to this page is the shortcut icon. The type of it is going to be an image, and the file format is ICO. And then we'll set the href, or hypertext reference, equal to image slash favicon.ico. So let's boot up Chrome by clicking on the little lightning bolt here in the upper right hand corner. And immediately Chrome appears. And it's setting up its own web server right now. And then eventually the page loads. And we see the little tiny favicon icon in the upper left hand corner on the tab. We'll put in a return and then we'll go over to fonts.google.chrome. And we're going to use the font Oswald. So in the search box I'm going to type in the word Oswald. And there it is. And I'll click on the red plus sign, and it's added it to our family selected. OK, I'll get rid of the word Oswald, and I'll replace it with the word rail, or R-A-L-E, however that's pronounced. And then I'll add that to my family selected as well. To see individual fonts on Google Fonts, go ahead and click on the font name. And it's going to take you to a page which shows you all the glyphs and all the font weights. And right down here are all the fonts that designers around the world are using um, with this particular railway font. So you have a large selection here. Now I clicked on Lato 2, and you can see at the bottom we now have three families selected. So I'll click on the black stripe at the bottom, and it pops up a window. And the first thing I want to do is get rid of that LATO or Lato font. So I'll click on the minus sign. Now currently in Google Fonts, there are two buttons you can press, and this is going to change rapidly because the interface of Google Font changes rapidly. So it may not look exactly the same when you watch this video. But no matter how it looks, we're going to have somewhere this link HTML code. And I'll select that, and we will copy this to our clipboard and paste it into our own HTML code. The other button on this menu is for the word customize, and you can scroll up and down. Now I can choose any of these font weights right here. For instance, I can choose medium 500, and take a look at the load time. It is now set to moderate. Going back to the embed, now I have a colon after the name of the font, 400 comma 500. So any weight you want to add from Google Fonts, you simply add in this area right here. I'll go back to the customize tab, and I'll uncheck medium 500. I'll scroll up, and you can still see that we have regular 400 chosen in our other fonts. Both fonts are listed here. Now I want to show you what happens when you have a whole bunch of fonts checked. So you want to be very careful about how many fonts you're going to include. Only include the fonts you're actually going to use because the load time is going to get slow. And the more fonts you add, the slower it gets. So to keep your page load fast, you just want to use a couple of fonts. So now when I uncheck these fonts, you can see our load time goes back to fast. Let's click back on the embed link, and we'll return to our link code. And I'm just going to copy the link code to my clipboard, and then I'll go back to the head tag and paste it in place. I'll go back to the Google Fonts page in my browser and copy the font family CSS rules to my clipboard. 
Then I'll go back to brackets and let's go to the styles.css sheet and I'm going to paste them and turn them into a remark by selecting both lines and hitting command slash on my keyboard. And if command slash doesn't work in your version of brackets, you need to install Emmet, which is located at emmet.io and follow the directions there for brackets. Let's return to the index.html page and then we'll go to the font awesome page. And I'll click on the get started link. And if you scroll on the page, assuming the interface is the same when you get there, you can just click on the little clipboard icon to copy the CDN or Content Delivery Network script code to your clipboard. I'll return to brackets and I'll paste the font awesome script code right underneath the Google Fonts code. Let's go back to Font Awesome in our browser and we'll flip over to the Icons tab. Font Awesome are a series of icons and there's a paid version and a free version of these icons. And obviously the paid version you get many more icons than you do in the free version. So I'll click on the free check mark and that way we'll only see the free icons listed. And as I scroll on the page you can see there's many icons here for you to use. And the best part is they react like fonts and they're SVG files, which means they can be scalable. Let's go back to brackets and the final thing I want to link to is our custom style sheet. So I'm going to type in the word link and the relationship to this page is a style sheet. And the href for our page is styles.css and I'll close that off. And now to test the link, let's go ahead and go back to styles.css and we'll add in a body declaration. And I'll add curly braces and open them up and then we'll set the background to red. Go back to index.html and click on the lightning bolt button and that will boot up Google Chrome. And you can see as soon as the page loads that the background is red. So the link is working. Um, once you close off Chrome, you'll often see this error message saying the live link preview was canceled. You can ignore that for now. Let's go back to the CSS style sheet and delete that declaration. Go back to the index HTML and we're ready for our next video where we're going to start adding our content for our gallery page.